All right, race fans, welcome back to another Tech Tuesday. Uh, part one was on the rear suspension. I'll put a link right here. Part two was front suspension with Bristol Boney. I'll put a link right here. And now we're on to part three, where we're going to talk about shocks and springs. Check it out. First thing, we're going to talk about that corner entry. Off the gas, on the brake, wheels to the left. The weight of the nose takes over. All the weight transitions onto the nose. We'll typically run about a 500 to a 550 pound spring in both fronts, even across. What we can do is we can change these springs out to affect how the car turns into the corner. If we increase that right front spring, what that's going to do is it's going to put more force on that corner, more uh, resistance on that corner. So as the car goes down in the corner, the nose wants to dive down. If you have that heavier spring right here, it's not going to allow it to dive as much. The left front will really dive down. The right front will kind of hold up and the car will really cut into the corner. We can do the exact same thing if we've got our 550 pound springs across the front is to take left front spring rate out. It does the exact same thing. Go down to a 500 or even a 450, let that car really cut down into the corner. After we've done our corner entry, the nose is down, the rear end will get light and it'll start to slide out behind the car. You'll see the driver's wheels come back to the right. This is what I call the transition. The right front's already down, the weight starts to come around and that right rear starts to apply down into the racetrack. What spring rate we have in the right rear will really affect how the car will land in that transition area. I like to run about a 200 pound spring, 225 pound spring in the right rear. We can increase that when the track is especially heavy, very, very fast, has a lot of traction. We'll go up to like a 225, 250 pound spring. Just a 25 pound increase makes a big difference by increasing that. This corner of the car won't fall down as hard in the transition. It'll kind of hold up in that part of the corner. And the car will stay freer and rotate. When you see those left front tires start coming up off the ground, it's typically from two things. One, they've either given the car too much left rear drop, or they run too soft of a right rear spring, and it picks that left front up as the car goes around the corner. Okay, we've made a good entry. The car handles well, rotates into the corner. We transition over onto the right side and especially the right rear. Car rolls through the center and now we want to press the gas pedal. You hear all the time we're trying to make drive, the car's lacking traction. There's two very easy things that we can do to add traction. First up on the front, if we've got our two 500 to 550 pound springs up here, all we have to do is add 25 or 50 pounds in the right front. Now remember that will free you up on entry. But when you go to press the gas pedal, the weight of the car starts trying to come off of the nose and it wants to start transitioning back into the back part of the car. So if you run a heavier spring in the right front, as you press the gas, it's going to push harder as the car wants to come back over into the left rear. If that left rear is pressing harder down into the racetrack, you're making traction. The second thing we can do is simply just go right back here in the left rear. I run a pair of 200s in the back of my car, 200 pounds, 200 pounds. But if we wanted to make some traction, I can always just go up to a 225 pound left rear spring. That harder spring rate is just going to push that left rear tire down into the racetrack. As you're on that exit or that on throttle point, that's where it's going to make that traction and speed. Okay, now that we've talked about springs, let's move on to shocks. Springs control how the car goes up and down, how much it travels. The shocks control the speed at which the car travels. You could easily do a 50 minute video about shocks. I'm going to keep it short and sweet for our Tech Tuesday video. First, let's just talk about the different types of shocks you'll see on race cars. Over here on the left, this is an entry level WB Pro. It's a welded body shock. Uh, the draw to it is it's very cheap. You can get into one of these for around 75 bucks. The disadvantage is that you can't revalve them. The way they come to you is the way that you put them on the car and race them. And the other disadvantage is they're not repairable. So if you have damage to the shock, like this one is, you basically throw it in the trash and order another one. So that's our WB Pro entry level shock. In the middle, we have a QA150 series from Precision Performance. Now again, this is an oil shock, but it can be taken apart. You can take apart the inside components. You can change the oil as well as the shim stacks to get the valving and control the way that you want it. This is around 175 to 200. And then what you'll see a lot on your AMODs, this is a bulb top Penske shock. It's got a Schrader valve on the top. This is gonna be a gas charge shock, as well as it's gonna have better internal components than the two on the left. So this is gonna be higher end shock. They can run up as much as 350. Now that you kinda of understand the types of shocks that we run, let's talk about what they do. The shock's got two phases. First is the compression phase. This is 
is how the shock goes in. The higher the number on the compression side is how hard it is to push in. So a three compression means it takes three force to push it in, where if you went up to a six or a seven, it would be much more difficult to push in. The second phase is the shock tries to release. It's called the rebound phase. This is how hard it is to pull the shock apart. Once again, if you have a three for a rebound, that's the amount of force it takes to pull apart. Or if you want to tie that corner down and make it really hard for that shock to separate, you can go up to a seven, eight, or nine. Now, like I said before, the shock stuff really gets specific brand by brand. So I'm not going to get into any details about what gets ran on the cars. But I will just highlight, when you buy a shock from someone, they'll send you a dyno sheet that will show you what it comes at. But with WB, you'll actually see a part number on them that will tell you the valving. So this is a WB welded shock. The 7 stands for length. That means it's a 7-inch shock. And then a 3.5. And the 3.5 is going to give you the compression and then the rebound. So the 3 is the compression. That's how hard it is to push in. And then the rebound is a 5. That means that it's going to be harder to pull apart than it is to push together. So when you hear the racers throwing numbers around, this is usually what they're talking about. What their compression number is and what their rebound number is to try to get the car to handle the way they want it. Alright, there we go. Parts 1, 2, and 3 of our Tech Tuesday program. Coming up on the 4th Tech Tuesday, we'll be talking about tires. Grinding, grooving, siphon, trying to get them the size that you want them to be. This has gone over so well, I have a feeling we'll probably continue it as we go out towards the racetracks in March. Maybe bring you some footage from the tracks and break down what a night at the racetrack looks like. Thanks for tuning in.